Hi Future Doc, I applied to med school last year but didn't get any offers. I'm considering giving up, but being a doctor has always been my dream. Do you think it's possible for me to reapply this year? If you're in the same position, the good news is that you can reapply to medicine, but there are some really important things that you need to consider about your application if you're going to make this attempt a success. So in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. One of the most common questions that I get is, can I apply to medical school if I didn't get in the first time around? And like I said, the answer is yes, but there are some things that we really need to consider. The first thing is understanding which medical schools that you can apply to. Now, there are lots of different universities that have different rules. For example, places like Leicester, Birmingham, Lancaster, they say that if you got to the interview stage and then got rejected after that, then you can't reapply again. So make sure that you are aware of which ones you can apply to, depending on what happened in the previous attempt, and make sure that you're not wasting those precious four places that you can submit applications to. Now, sometimes it can be a bit confusing about which universities you can apply to. So if you go to the Future.Doc website onto the free resources section, we actually have an infographic and a university guide for both undergrad and grad for which universities you can apply to in which situation. Beyond just reapplication, it will tell you whether it's a good idea to apply there based on a certain UCAT score that you got and all the other 10 or so variables that make up a good university selection choice for you as an individual. So when you are reapplying, you'll need to do the usual re-register with UCAS, resit the UCAT. And this year, the UCAT is more important than ever because especially if you're an undergrad, it's literally the only exam that you can and will do to get you into medical school. You may have been aware of a previous exam called the BMAT. However, they have dropped that, those seven universities that took that undergrad level, they will no longer be doing that. And for now, for this year at least, they have adopted the UCAT instead. So whereas before you had the UCAT and maybe you had a second attempt with the BMAT, this year the UCAT will be really important. Now you have an advantage because you have done this already most likely and you will know a little bit about it. However, graduates, and the chances are if you are reapplying that you are a graduate, also have one other trick up their sleeve, which is the GAMSAT. Now, I would recommend highly taking the GAMSAT if you are able to do it, purely because, firstly, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, and because of that, not many people want to do it. And therefore, just by virtue of doing it, you will double the number of universities available to you to apply to. Now, if you're resitting, I'm going to take you through roughly the five key areas that I would recommend that you really revisit to make sure that this time around, your application is much, much stronger. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, every year on the Future.Doc program, we get tons of people who have failed previous applications, they've come to us, and then we've managed to get them in on the first time with us after sometimes having three, four, even five failed attempts without us. So this is exactly the process that we do, obviously in a lot of detail, but kind of roughly how we look at it. The first thing is to look at the work experience. And by work experience, remember that it's not just shadowing, it's the whole encompassing CV, if you will, that presents the case and gives you the experience to show that you want to be a doctor. It's the same if you're applying as a dentist as well and just demonstrate to them, but also give you the knowledge that are gonna get you through the process. It's not just about ticking a box. This is where you really build, not just like I say, the case to present to the universities, but it helps you elevate yourself to the kind of person that will just become a fantastic, not only medical student, but a good applicant. And then that gives you the springboard to go on and be, have a fantastic medical or dental career and just be a great doctor or dentist. The second thing is looking at the academics. The very first hurdle to anybody submitting a medical or dental school application is do you meet the minimum eligibility criteria? You will be amazed at how many people come to us and they have misunderstood some basic information, particularly grads, all the way down to what GCSEs they need, what A-levels they need. They've applied to a, a university or for a specific place that they had no chance in hell of getting because if you understood the criteria, it would be a direct no. That application went straight in the bin. No matter how much of the other stuff they did, if they missed that initial fact, then they were never going to get an offer at that place. They were never gonna get beyond or invited to interview because they were never gonna get past that very first hurdle that universities put up. So that might mean if you don't have great GCSEs, particularly maths and English language, you might have to resit them. But also then you need to select universities that accept resit GCSEs. Same with A-levels. If you don't have certain A-levels that you need, you might need to consider sitting them, especially international students who come Often their um, home qualification is either not accepted or they don't quite fit the exact criteria for the university and they will have to consider sitting A-levels. If you have a degree and you didn't get either a two, one or a first, 
it is still possible with a 2-2, although very difficult, then you can still get in via the graduate route if you have a merit or above at masters. And if you think that the masters is difficult, well, actually you can do the masters whilst you're applying to medical school and you have that conditional offer, so to speak. However, don't worry if you think the masters is going to delay it because you can start the masters as you're submitting your application. That means you can do it and get that merit whilst you're going through the application to meet the eligibility criteria to get in. Then of course we have the aptitude test, so the UCAT, which this year is probably going to be more important than ever. I have this thing that you may have heard me say that it's equally overvalued but underestimated. People don't quite understand how much work or how different the test is compared to other ones and how much prep they have to put in to score well, but also they overvalue how important the UCAT is. What I mean by that is that they place the sole importance of their application on the UCAT. And that is also false. It's the whole package. Again, we get lots of people come to our program every year who smash the UCAT. They got 3,000, 2,900, and they didn't get a single offer. And you know why? It's because if you don't make a whole rounded application, if you don't present yourself as the full package, then you will get to interview, that's fine, but you won't get past interview because people will see through the fact that all you did really was do well in one particular exam and you don't have all the other prerequisites that they want to see in somebody who is deserving and going into the career for the right reasons. So at FutureDoc, we're obviously always working hard to make sure that we give the best UCAT prep because that is such an important part. But especially this year, because it's been so important, I've been going really deep on deconstructing, not uh, really beyond just techniques, what that individual needs to do and create almost a formula for if this individual does X, Y, and Z steps, they will almost guarantee that they get a 3000 plus, which is exactly what we need to be aiming for. So if you would like some help and you'd like to look at exactly that gauntlet that we put people through to make sure that they get a high score, you can check out the program. It's application only, and this year we have been very oversubscribed, so we've had to limit places. Sometimes uh, some become available, but often we sell those out quite quickly. So we are opening applications at the moment. So if you want to submit one, you can check out the link below for where to submit that. But like I say, that is where we will take people exactly through the process of how to go from not zero, because you can't score a zero in the UCAT, the lowest score is 1,200, but you know, zero to hero, and just do really well to take control of the application. The next thing is the universities that you select. You have four university options that you can choose and they are so critical. Often, like I say, we get lots of people come to us who've had several attempts at not getting in. When they come to us, one of the most important things is sitting down and choosing those four choices. That is often the biggest factor in our success with these kind of students. Now, it is because people are too simplistic with their analysis of where they should apply. Like I say, we provide some kind of overview resources that are free on the website but when we do this with our students we are very very granular it's not like oh I'm a grad and I've got this UCAT so I'll go here it's like this individual in front of me with these strengths these weaknesses this certain thing about their application and it's really kind of like honing in very very specifically on the universities that suit that individual so see your application as an individual and not as a category for which you should apply to and then finally, it's all about interview. Now, interviews, of course, the final hurdle, but everybody thinks it's just about that performance. And yes, it is that performance, but that performance is affected by everything that you've done in periphery to the preparation. So it's not about learning the answers. It's about gaining the experience throughout. I always say to my students who join, we are preparing for interview now. So before you've even thought about your UCAT, your interview prep is starting. What we're doing here is building up to be the kind of person that is just so good that they can't say no to when it comes to interview time. But we're building and working towards becoming that person now. The sooner you start, the better. So get out of that mentality of just, again, hacking the interview. A couple of weeks of preparing and then you'll be fine. It's not about that. It's about elevating yourself into the kind of person that when you present in front of the MMI uh, circuit or in front of an interview panel, that you are just the real deal. And there are lots of ways to make sure that you can do that. Now, one thing to be aware of, if you are an undergraduate, so if you're in year 13 and you didn't get a place, a lot of people, because they don't want to waste time, 
they want to go and do something at university. So they will go and do, say, a biomed degree or something so that they don't feel like they are not using that time. I would just say one thing. If your heart is set on medicine and you don't really want to be a biomedical scientist, just bear in mind that when you go into graduate medicine, once, once you have a degree, regardless of whether you're applying for the five year or four year course, you are a graduate applicant. And it goes from about a 16% success rate with undergraduate applicants to about a two to 3% success rate, about one in 34. People think it makes sense. Oh, I'll just get a degree. I'll just go and do this. And that will mean that the time's not wasted. But if your heart is set on medicine, then you are really going to make things much more difficult for yourself by going that route. So I completely understand the idea of people not wanting to waste time. But if your heart is truly set on something, I think that it actually wastes more time in the long run because ultimately all you're trying to do is get back to the original goal of getting into medicine. And okay, if you do an extra year applying and you don't get it, then it might feel like a wasted year, but three years of doing something and doing a degree that honest to yourself, you're not actually that your heart isn't set on that particular one. If it is, then great. But you know, that could be a lot of wasted time on something that just one more year having another go will make you get over the line. And then you've got to think about that equation in the long run. It's not as simple as, oh, well, I don't want to waste a year, so I will go and do a degree. So just bear that in mind. And if you're a graduate and you're on multiple applications, I just want to give you some words of encouragement because there are many, many graduates and many fantastic medical students and that I know that have gone on to be great doctors who applied multiple, multiple times. I would really encourage you to try not to lose heart. I've seen many, many people now get in on their fourth, fifth, even sixth attempt. And it's just about, understanding what it is you need to get right to just crack that code and essentially the medical school application is just a game and you just have to learn to play that game really really well so keep going and honestly try not to lose heart because I have seen so many people just after a bit of perseverance and really understanding what it is that's going to make the difference between a failed and a successful application and once they understand that then they get in and obviously all that thing that they've been building up to and dreaming of and trying again and again for finally comes true. The big thing that I see that makes a difference with those grads who are kind of in this cycle of kind of applying, they're very busy so they don't submit their best application so they don't get in and it knocks their confidence a little bit and then the next attempt is not great and then they kind of get in this cycle of just applying for the sake of applying but not really being focused and really going for it in a way that they're going to nail it to get a place. I would honestly recommend that you check out the Future Doc program because we have lots of people like this where we kind of sort them out, make sure that they submit a really strong application and make sure that this is the year that they do it and it's their final attempt so they can just put it behind them, get into med school and move on with their life. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more about that, check out in the description below where you can apply. But otherwise, if you want to find out a little bit more about how to do well in the UCAT this year, I recommend that you check out this video here. Otherwise, best of luck with your application and I hope that this time round is the one that works for you.